So I want to start, I kind of want to go back to the basics, okay? So it's something I want to get your guys' I want to kind of see where your head is, if that's it. And I'm going to ask you all a question and you're all going to answer it individually, okay? So if I ask you, let's start with Kimmy, we'll leave Carla for last, okay? Kimmy, if, if I asked you why do you believe in God? What would you say? Um, well, I, I was, I guess in the beginning, we weren't raised in the church, but throughout the years and my parents coming. You were to, not raised in the church? No, we started coming when we were like about, we were, we were young, like around six or seven, I think, around there. And you remember that? Yes. Do you? Yeah. We were young. Yeah, I remember when, uh, when uh, William started going to our house. All that. That's how it started with William. Okay. All right. So, why? Why did Why did you start believing? How are you convinced? And I'm gonna ask all of you the same question. Okay. It's still me. <laughs> yes, it's still you. Have an answer. <laughs> um, I think every day that we wake up is another blessing and I think there's more to life than just waking up, living your normal day and then going back to bed. And so it's like we see things or hear or experience things that none of us can like really explain to ourselves. Okay. Beyond that there's more than just what I guess we go through our daily. So lives. in your mind there's there's just something more. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that helps you believe. Okay, let me ask you something. If your parents gave you the option to stay home, would you? And be honest. Please, please be honest about it. Sometimes, yes. Sometimes you feel you would stay home. Okay. Why? Okay. Is there anything special about this place to you? Believe, yeah, why? Why do you believe? Like, why are you convinced that there is a God? What convinced you? And also, I think it's a, well, I'm not thinking, it's a, it's what, like, the Bible says, and, you know, like, everything starts adding up, you know, like, the times and everything. Um, okay. That's what, you know, what's up, that's what made me believe, you know? And, and, uh, you know, and die, you know, with the, knowing that, you know, you, you might have a chance to go with, you know, God or, you know. Of something else after you die. Yeah, after I die, you know. It gives, it gives me something, you know, like, like a better myself, you know. And, uh, okay. That, like, when, no, like, if I die, you know, uh, there's something, you know, more, you know. More out there. More. So, kind of something with. What Kimmy said, Same. and you added because the Bible. Okay, all right. Uh, Josh, um, Jarlin, keep think. Okay, because I'm gonna ask you to. Um, why? Why do I believe? Yeah. Uh, and then it's like, it's like, first it was a routine, and then I mean, literally, you can see the evidence in it. Okay. Just like he said, the Bible. How uh, the Bibles, like all the prophecies, add up, and then out of the Bible, even uh, historians uh, encounter Jesus and everything that happened in the Bible. So it's it's not a lie, and so the prophecies or the prophecies being completed couldn't be a lie. And then at the end of the day, it's like our daily lives, like what are the odds that out of all the deaths that are happening, you're still alive, you're still kicking. 
and then like all the odds are against you like me when I went broke down in front of you and you said just give up and I was like I can't give up and I kept chucking and then look look where I'm at now I'm, just, mm. I'm not so evidence yeah just evidence personal of, evidence personal right of, uh, evidence that happened And I didn't tell Josh to give up, okay? It was, it was more to that story. Okay? <laughs> it was more to that story, okay? Jesse. Me? Yeah. Yes, why, you're Jesse. Why do I believe? Why? Why do you believe in God? Um, I guess it's because I've already experienced the world, and I know um, what it offers, and uh, that I experienced God, and I know what that offers. And there's no comparison into um, the joys. Like, it's just um, the joy is everlasting or it's uh, temporary. So I choose um, everlasting. And it's um, when I found a Bible on my, on my bed, I really felt like I was destined to be a believer. Okay. So what it offers. So what it offers, yeah. I need better markers. Okay. All right, Charlie. Um, I think for me it's a bit of everything. It's uh, I was raised first of all to believe um, that there was the Bible, and same the things that um, I go through or the things that my family's been through. It's it's hard not to believe that God behind all that, and He's God and He's everything. Okay. So you added something that says raised. I'll ask you the same question, okay? If you were given the option not to come, would you still come? Like now? Yeah. No, I'd still come. You'd still come. Carla? I was actually asked this question in one of my math classes. And um, what the professor was kind of going towards was um, kind of like an axiomatic belief. So we base like our math off of, you know, like a line, like a building is made up of lines or whatever. And then you have to like define every word. Well, what is a line? So there's certain axioms that you base your whole mm -hmm. belief on. Right. So what he was going towards is what are our axioms, our axiom, axioms in our faith. And so like the whole Bible could be empty if you don't believe that God is true. So, and it's because I'm a Christian scriptures major that the Bible is empty if you don't have a core belief. Um, and I like pondered it a while and Mostly, I would say that I think it is like being able to feel like the two way love. Like, I've felt one way love before and it's empty and it's not satisfying. But I think being able to feel that he's there as much as I come to him is kind of what makes it real. And even like when I have to, like, even though I can't prove it, like, scientifically. Um, Hmm. Okay. It's still, like, it's undeniable, the love that's there, I would say. So, revealed, in a sense. Yeah. Through what you feel, right? Okay. Now, if, if I ask you guys, why do you believe, right? And, and if we look at it, okay, there's a lot of, there's a lot of personal right so there's a lot of personal I was raised I, I feel it like when I was revealed okay personal evidences okay and I feel there is something more okay now and what it offers is probably not necessarily personal and then we have the Bible so, if I can refute the Bible, 
and I can refute what it offers, what is what are you left with? Feelings. Right? Sure. But feelings are, are relative. Mm -hmm. And that, what I mean by that is what you feel is what you feel. That's that's personal. And just because you felt it doesn't mean I'm going to. Mm -hmm. Just because you cried at Chick Flick doesn't mean I'm going to. Right? Jesse might. <laughs> okay, but I'm not. It's relative. So why are we convinced that there is a God? Like, why Why are you convinced? And, and I, look, I'm not saying the way you believe or why you believe it is wrong. Okay, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying what I am saying that at a core, at a, at a core belief, what everything is founded on, what everything is completely based on, is it based on something that's absolutely real because I know it's real or it's because I feel that it's real? And these are two very different things. Okay. We, some of us are very logical, and that's it's a problem that we have, and I'm one of them. Okay, I have to know why. I need to know the facts. I need, I need to line it up with, with science. I need to line it up with math, and I need it to make sense. I have to make sense of it, because if I don't make sense of it, then there's like a voice inside of me that's like, maybe it's not real, man. Maybe it's not true. So I have to. I admire people... I do wholeheartedly whose faith is completely based on complete faith. Like one verse in the Bible says it, therefore forget it. Like that's it. That's all I need. That's all I'm ever gonna need. I don't need me to get I need I don't need to make any logic of it. I don't need a, a study. I don't need a theological background on it. I just believe it because the Bible says it. Like I, I admire that. Like I wish I, I think sometimes I would be willing to trade that. Just believe blindly like i wish i could but i'm not wired that way it's just not the way i am so if i ask you why do you believe and if if in, do you think with your answer and here's where i'm getting to this because we're going to start like a small series do you believe that with the answer that you gave me you can convince someone who doesn't believe do you because if the Bible is right, let's say the Bible is one of your substances, okay? We can refute the Bible. Now, if you don't, if you don't haven't really studied the Bible in itself, not just I read the Bible, but just the book in itself, how it's composed, why it's composed, who wrote it, when they wrote it, why they wrote it, then we can really just say, you know what? Like I'm an atheist, so whatever the Bible says, I don't, I don't, I don't buy it. So then, what's your argument? Because if you yourself don't know what the Bible has to offer, like why it's real or why it's not real, then we come into a problem, right? So the question again is, if with the answer that you gave me, and if I was an atheist, could you convince me that there is something out there? Is it our job to convince you? Uh, Peter says, always be, always be ready. Peter, 1 Peter 3, 5, I believe it is. Always be ready to give an answer. So always be ready to give an answer. Can we? Like wholeheartedly, like can we really? And look, and, and it, it, it's, and I hate to say it this way. It is, it is our job to know, right? But not everyone is really moved by really understanding or knowing why. Some of us, some of y'all are like, look, I believe. I don't need nothing else. I don't care what he says. I don't care what she says. I don't care what they say. I just believe. Like, I get that. And I admire that. Okay. But in the world that we're growing up, in the world that you guys are being raised, in the schools that you guys are going to, you will encounter this more and more. So are we really ready to receive, to refute, to talk, to, to teach this? Is your answer really like a legitimate answer? Are you completely convinced that God actually exists? And if you are completely convinced that God actually exists, what is it based on? Like, can we? Can you take God... 
<laughs> Does God and science, are they separate? Or can we mix them? What do you think? Um, I think some of it, yes, like the basics. But once it gets into the uh, actual um, advances in it, like the further formulas that they need to use, um, some of it is flawed. Okay. So, some science. Some science, yes. Okay. See, what's, what's interesting with science and math is that science and math, they just explain what's already happening. It's not that they're giving you something new. Math and science don't create. Especially math, it simply explains what already exists. I don't know if that, does that make sense? Math just explains what already happened. What we've done as humans, we've, we've given names to things. So you say one, two, three, four, five. Does anybody, everybody know what that means? What, everybody knows what one is? Yeah. Everybody knows what two is, right? Yeah. And everybody in here is, is in agreement what one and two is. And everyone here is in agreement that two plus two is four, right? Why do we know that? Because we've given a name to two objects. Who, who says that? What if, at, what if at the beginning of time, we actually called two a three? You would have never known the difference. Because that's the way we were raised. We just gave it that name, and that's what it's called. So now a two is a two. But what if since the beginning of time, two actually was, I don't know, some weird number name it's called a quacky right and then we all know what a quacky plus a quacky is a quacky but a quacky is a, 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 a quacky i don't know like but we just give it that it's it's all relative because we've given it that it just explains what already is what already exists so in a sense at least in my personal view and, and i don't mean to diminish your comment it's it's, we can't check science at the door. We can't ignore it. We can't ignore logic. We can't ignore mathematics. We can't ignore um, um, uh, every aspect of science with religion and just say, oh, that's, that's, we don't need that. I believe that the, the Bible is factual, that God is... <sighs> As provable as a lot of science is. I do. Maybe not in a test tube type of thing, but definitely provable. And we can see evidences of it. And that's what I want to get into with you guys. I want to solidify your faith and really solidify why you believe it and why is it logical? Why does it make sense to believe that there is a God? And that's where I want to start. Okay. But I want to start with Jesus, because he is really the center of this whole thing. So I want to start with him. I want to start with the evidences, because one of the first things that we're going to have to do, okay, is we're going to have to um, prove, okay, is how reliable the Bible actually is, okay? Because if we look at some historical context, okay, if we look at some historical context, will realize that some people believe that some of the stories in the Bibles are actually false. Okay, some some historians for some for 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 a while they discovered uh, they 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 said that King David never actually existed. And if we look at the Bible, King David wrote the Book of Psalms, the Book of Samuel is based around a lot of Book of Samuel is based around him, Chronicles, Judges. So how is it that the Bible speaks about a character, but history itself says, like, oh, this character never existed? And then years later, they discovered in one of his enemies, like, one of the enemy um, territories around him, they wrote a write, they found a writing, a historical writing, where it says that they were conquered by King David. Um, the, Egyptian, the Egyptian historical context never speaks of the Exodus. I don't know if you guys know that. Egyptian historical context in their historical books never talks about Israel ever leaving Egypt. Did you guys know that? And they document everything down to the T. 
embarrass me for that. That's the point. But unless we understand why, you see, the Egyptians were very proud. And every time there was a loss, they never documented. Ever. See, Egyptians only documented victories and things that were going well. So the Egyptians never documented losses. Or certain gods or kings that they had that actually failed are not documented in their historical context. They're discovered because of archaeological findings. So we start piecing parts of the Bible together that go along with actual secular, secular historical context and we realize the actual validity of what the Bible says. But I need you guys to understand and to believe that the Bible is actually a living, breathing book that has historical context. is accurate. Okay. I want you to believe that there was a man named Jesus, that secular history talks about it. Secular historians talk about it. We need to talk about uh, Jesus Christ in his entirety, and who he was, what he wants, what he said, why he said it. Okay, we're gonna, I want to go back to the basics. I want to start with Jesus because then we're going to talk about the existence of God. Okay, any questions up to this point? So let's start with some basics. Some stuff that you guys already heard me say, but I, I want to start there because then we're going to go back to it. Let's talk, let's talk about Jesus. If we talk about Jesus and we, we talk about the beginning of his ministry, where would we go? What book? If we talk about Jesus and the beginning of Jesus' ministry, where would we go? Okay, she says Matthew. Everybody agree? Anybody disagree? Well, when he physically shows up, right? Okay. Because you can say... Well, his personal ministry. Sure. Just Jesus... But him physically being... Would be Matthew. What about before that? It wasn't it was the very beginning. Ministry. It wasn't as... Mm, technically, right? Technically, it wasn't his ministry. Was he present? Yes, but it wasn't his ministry. Oh, see, like, that's, that's... Yeah. <laughs> and that's the part that's, that's pretty... We can debate it, right? Like, which is great. But if we're going to look at Jesus and his pre-existence, or that he's always existed... Where do we go then? John. John what? John 1 John. and beginning John 1 1. Man, these markers are getting better and better. <laughs> <laughs> John, open your Bible to John 1 1. I think the pink one is the best. Huh? The pink one might be the best. It's the favorite color. No, it's just. I probably need to get a new board. Good board? Yeah, a whiteboard. Like a whiteboard, yeah. Not a clear one. John 1 1, what does it say? Give me. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. What beginning is that? Before Earth, everything. So, Earth is the beginning of Earth. Where do we find it? Genesis. Genesis. Genesis 1 1. Right? Yeah. What is also created at Genesis? Can you can you tell me? What's also created? What are what are some human things that we have that were created in the beginning? Planets, stars. Planets, stars, stars. okay. What else? Time, space, and matter. <laughs> Time. Space and matter. Why is that important, Carla? Why? Because time, space, and matter? Yeah. <laughs> um, why is... <laughs> what is matter? 
it was important because it is important to know that God exists outside of every one of these three things. So in order for space, time, and matter to exist, something has to exist outside of it to create time, space, and matter. Is time important to us? Yeah. Why? Measurement. It's a measurement of how long we live or how long time has existed, right? Mm -hmm. Do we live under time? Are yeah. we constricted under time? Yeah. Absolutely, we are. Okay. What about space? Do we take up a physical space? So our reality is the space that we live in. So that's, that's where we live. This is where we step. This is the space that we are surrounded by. What about matter? It is a physical. Matter is everything. It is a physical existence of who we are. We take up space and we take up and we are constricted under time. Okay. Do you know why you get old? Do you guys actually know why you get old? Your cells. What about them? Start dying a little bit. So your DNA, right? Your DNA, when you get young, when you're a kid, you reproduce your DNA at a rapid pace and they all, you know, they all reproduce fast and it's... You get younger and younger, your DNA is replicating fast, and it's all great. And as you get older, as time passes, your DNA starts missing. Kind of like an old car that all of a sudden you got to gas it up a little bit so it'll, it'll go, right? So that DNA that doesn't replicate, what happens is, that's especially the skin, you notice it. The cells in your skin aren't replicating as fast as they need to, as they should. So you start seeing little, like, crow's thing here. And <laughs> You know, your skin starts sagging just a little bit. That's because your DNA isn't replicating as fast or as efficient as it needs to be. That's why these creams that you buy at the store ain't doing anything. It's all cellular stuff that's happening within your DNA. <laughs> that's all it is. Okay? Because we are constricted to time. So whatever God, whatever created God, whatever created the planet has to live outside of space, time, and matter. So that means that time, space, and matter is something that we're limited to. But there's also one thing that's very important that was created in the beginning. What was it? We can talk about what we're going to say was created for now. Okay. Is it the light? sin okay we're gonna say that for now and we'll get into that later why is that important because we're all bound by it and God is it okay don't don't get mad at that yet just sin began to exist here okay all right we'll, we'll get into that later but for the time being, we're, we're going to explain it just a little bit more, okay? Don't, so don't, don't go telling your parents that I'm lying to you because I'm, technically I'm not, okay? No. Technically. I'm not lying to you yet, okay? No, no, no. I'm lying to you now, but I'm going to explain what later what. Let, let, let's leave it at that, okay? So, <laughs> I know. Okay, so we'll talk about this later. This is really important, okay? So we'll, we'll talk about this later. This is really important, okay? So... In the beginning says, John 1 says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was what? So, what is the, who is the word? God. No, nope. who is the word? Jesus. Jesus. Now it says, in the beginning was the word. So who's the word? Jesus. Jesus. And it says, and Jesus was what? With God. With God. But then it says what? The word was God. Jesus was God. So what the heck does that mean? Two and one. Okay. So in the beginning, John says, in the beginning was the word, Jesus. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Well, that presents a problem. Doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, it has to present a problem. Because we've been taught You've been taught, I've been taught, we believe that when we talk about if this is God, where's Jesus? Outside. Jesus is above, next to, or below? Next to. Next to. Within. Where is he? Right. The way that they've been taught. The way that we believe it, or you believe it. Where do you believe he is? 
believe here, here, or here? But he's with, with them. You believe he's here? Yeah. What do you believe? Kim? Oh, that's talking to me. Yep. <laughs> um, I would kind of say it's, he's right next to him. Okay, so you would say he's here. Which is... Right? <laughs> well, wouldn't it be either left or right? Yeah, the, don't worry about what side I'm okay, yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, next to. Yes. Okay. Jar? I think he has, he has the same power as God, but in a way, sort of, like, God is higher but not saying that Jesus is placed below him. So he's like next to him but smaller than him. Same power as that, but not that. Yeah, like uh, But that's not true because he's not God Jesus was not said to be omniscient. Like he doesn't know everything within time. And you could prove that with the gospel. So it wouldn't have the same power. Mm. You see why this is important? Because I don't completely agree with Carla either. Right. Yeah. So Jesus oh, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. All knowing? Well, he knew he was in the Right. Oh, absolutely. During his ministry, he was all knowing. Yeah. Well, we're not in his ministry yet. We're here. So let's go here. Okay, stay here. Stay in John 1 1. We'll get into that. <laughs> okay? So, would you put them, would you just make a small circle? A smaller circle? There's no wrong answer, okay? We're, we're going to get into this. Okay, so I don't want you to think there's a wrong answer here. But we're gonna, we're just, this is why we're doing this. Okay? So, not caring what side it's on, so you would say here. Yeah. Right? Okay. Uh, Dave. You know, okay. All right, it's fine. Uh, Josh. I'm in between. <laughs> <laughs> right here. <laughs> no, uh, I think uh, God and Jesus are one. Okay. So you would place Jesus... Like a circle around the same circle of God and then put Jesus' name right under it. You would do this. Yes, the same. So isn't it interesting though? Like if we think about it, right? One, two, three, four, five. What about you? I have a Trinitarian belief. Okay. So that's six. What do you think, Alma? Side involved. The side. So here, same side circle or a little bigger? I think about like an inch off about. Okay. Okay. So. <laughs> so like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So think about this. Okay. Think about this. We all believe in Jesus. We love Jesus. Jesus is the center of our salvation. But there's six different beliefs of how we believe Jesus is. What level of import? Not level of importance, I should say, but authority. Authority he has. That's a problem. What you think? Especially amongst ourselves. Yeah, it's a problem. Yeah? Yeah. So we're going to discuss this because I think it's really important. And I figured this was going to happen. That's why I want to start here. So if we read, and John 1 is probably just solidifies, and we have more verses that we talk about. We can, I want you to leave with this verse and just, as you think about it, please just think about it in your head. John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. Like, how do you, how do we put that together? How do we say that? I mean, it's biblical. You, you're not reading it any way else. Okay, like, it's we're, you're reading it out of the Bible. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And everything that was created was created through Him. And if not for Him, nothing would have been created 
I mean, really, where does Jesus fall in all this? Okay. We need to get into that. Okay, we're going to. All right, so John 1 is a good place to start. So think about that. Keep it in your in your minds. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. What does with God mean? But then it says in the Word was, was God. So it's like he was next to him, but he was also God. I'm not saying, I'm not giving you a theology here. Just reading text here. Okay? We'll get into it. Questions? Okay. Let's pray.